Hey, it's Jay. Today I'm on my way over to help a neighbor out with a concrete patch on her driveway. It's broken up after three years of use in a couple of spots. And before it gets worse, in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to patch up a little driveway. <laughs> All right, today we're addressing three problematic areas, as you can see. The first thing we're gonna do before we even consider repairing is we've gotta clean the area. Step one is we're gonna clean out all the dirt and the grass and grit that's grown in there. And then step two is we're gonna actually give it a little diluted muriatic acid wash, which is gonna etch the surface, it's gonna remove dirt and grease, and get everything looking good before we add the bonding agent and then the concrete mix. We also want to make sure we get any of the loose gravel out of here. See, if you don't get all these small pieces out, they'll continue to wiggle. You can get in here and just get out some of these pieces that are just really loose. Now that I've actually removed pieces of loose concrete, and then also I've left these, these are in there really solid. These are going to be pieces that we're going to actually adhere to. We're going to do a bonding agent that's going to help us attach into the existing driveway here. So I'm just estimating here, but we're going to take about seven parts water to... <coughs> ooh, ooh, I got, what a, ooh, got a huge waft there. This is muriatic acid, which uh, we have a spa at our house, so I use this to, to balance out the pH in our spa. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it over the hole just in case any spills. And you can see that when it hits the concrete, it actually bubbles up. I'm just going to pour a little water over this and spill just a little on the side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sprayer bottle. You don't want to get the surface of your existing driveway that you're not going to patch, but what I'm doing is I'm actually hitting up the concrete that's existing that I'm going to go over. And you can see that it's bubbling a bit. And what this is going to do is it's going to bubble out all the impurities, basically etching the surface, and it's getting everything that we need to out of the way so that when I do put that bonding agent on there, it'll adhere very well. You can see here that the diluted muriatic acid has now stopped bubbling, which means it's done its work. Any greases, oils that were on the surface are now lifted up. A lot of the dirt is lifted out. And the last thing we have to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of water going to wash it away. One thing that's always recommended is that you want to make sure that your surface is damp when you apply, especially concrete, but it's okay to be damp when you apply the bonding agent as well. You want to make sure there's no standing water, but the area is damp. The concrete itself is very porous and it absorbs quite a bit of water. And if we put our cement, our concrete mix onto this when it's not wet or damp, it'll pull moisture right out of our mixture and, it, and the bond between the old surface and the new surface won't be as good. All right, now let's prep our other two areas. Here we go. Look at that muriatic acid working, cleaning out everything etching that surface. If you don't have any muriatic acid, you can pick it up anywhere, uh, just about any store that sells pool supplies. The next thing we want to do is we're going to add a concrete bonding agent. And what that does is it just makes the bond between the existing concrete and the new concrete that much stronger. Since this is a driveway, people are going to be driving over these patches. We want to make sure we make it strong enough. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to you want to make sure it goes on at least as thick as a coat of paint on a wall goes on. Uh, I'm going to link all these products below in the description. This is actually settled down a little bit. This side right here is going to act as my uh, leveling barrier here. So we're going to, when we pour it in, it'll level out up to here. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of carve out these little grooves here so that the concrete can expand and contract over time. Under here, I've got like a little cavern, which is always good. If you're able to chisel in this way, when you're actually prepping the concrete, so that when the concrete does pour, it actually goes a little underneath the lip, then that's really good because uh, it'll make a really tight bond and if it tries to pull up at all or anything like that, these other pieces will stop it from moving up. 
Here's my concrete bonding agent, and I smelled it. It smells exactly like Elmer's glue. It looks like a white glue, too. Now, this can be applied to the concrete if the concrete's dry or wet. Little nicks in the driveway right here. I'll just patch those up too while I'm at it. Oops. Being very liberal on this one. A good bond here. There's lots of rough grooves for the concrete to adhere to. The only thing that's going wrong here is my brush is leaving bristles behind. It's been about a half an hour and we're still waiting for the uh, concrete adhesive to, to get tacky enough. I'm giving it about an hour, especially since there's direct sun today. It's, it's drying up pretty quickly. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna start to mix up the Quickcrete, you want it to be kind of like a peanut butter consistency. You want to make sure that all little chunks in it are mixed in and smooth and um, almost like a thick milkshake. The first step is I'm going to add water to the bucket. And then after I add the water, I'm going to start adding in some of the concrete mix. The reason you want to add water first to the bucket is because if you add the concrete first, when you pour the water on top, some of the concrete might get plugged in corners and not actually get the moisture on it. So if you add water first, then it'll actually keep the concrete on the top. The water and the concrete will mix very well and you won't get any clumps after the fact uh, left in the bottom. Also, you want to make sure you wear nitrile gloves. Concrete especially, the cement, the Portland cement in the concrete is very basic. If you touch the concrete with your bare hands, it'll leave your hands all uh, dried out and your skin will start cracking and peeling over time. So just wear gloves. Nitro gloves are really good because they're very resistant to the concrete itself. All right, so now we're gonna mix it all up. Break up all the chunks. See that, so we've got chunks in here. So I don't have a lot of concrete tools. So I actually used a lot of painting tools. This is just a paint stirrer that I'm using now. It's getting thicker, I'm not feeling chunks anymore. All right, we're gonna let the concrete set for five minutes or so. Remember earlier I said that it's important to apply a little bit of moisture before we apply the concrete because we wanna make sure the existing concrete doesn't absorb all the moisture out of the, the new concrete that we're gonna put on. So I'm not actually using a cement trowel, but instead I'm using a spatula that you'd use to patch drywall. Work it in. And I wanna make sure I get it in all the cracks and crevices underneath. First step, work it into the cracks. I don't have a, like I said, I don't have a trowel, but this is actually used for tiling. Just applying some pressure, just making sure I get everything down in there. Now I'm just gonna use a taping knife and I'm gonna go back in to the groove here. All I'm doing is I'm just gonna remove this little layer right here. I cleaned out the areas. Now there's actually a brush screen going this way. So what I'm gonna do 
Let's just go along. Little patch here. And all I'm doing is I'm just taking off the surface. Blending in the fix here. We just finished up. As you can see, uh, everything looks pretty good. Now I just need to leave it to dry. And the last step here is I'm just gonna take a shop vac and I'm gonna clean everything up. Are you ready for It's Just Science? First, what is muriatic acid? Muriatic acid is simply hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a hydrogen atom and a chlorine atom connected by a polar covalent bond. Muriatic acid is just 31.5% of hydrochloric acid. Yes, it is the same stuff that's in your stomach that helps you digest your food. Acid is also used in pools to help balance the pH. Jabir Hyan is credited with discovering hydrochloric acid around 800 AD. He combined common salt with concentrated sulfuric acid and it yielded sodium hydrogen sulfate, which is an aqueous solution, which means it's soluble in water, and hydrogen chloride, which is the same thing as hydrochloric acid, but it's in gas form rather than aqueous. Second, why did the muriatic acid burn my nostrils? <coughs> oof, oof, I got water. Oof, got a huge waft there. Hydrochloric acid is very soluble in water, meaning it completely ionizes. That's why it's a strong acid. What are we mostly made of? H2O or water. So hydrochloric acid is very corrosive in the presence of water. And since we're mostly made of water, that's why I felt burning. Because the fumes were ionizing inside my nose. Finally, how does muriatic acid etch concrete? Concrete is made of sand or gravel, water, and Portland cement. Let's take a look at what Portland cement's made of. Limestone, shells, chalk, shale, calcium oxide, silicon dioxide, aluminum oxide, and gypsum are the main components of Portland cement. Because of the Portland cement, concrete has a very high alkalinity or pH around 12 when mixed and poured. Concrete hardens through a chemical reaction between the water that we added to the mix and the calcium silicate in the concrete itself. It makes a calcium silicate hydrate and a calcium hydroxide. A hydrate locks the water molecule in place and then it becomes a solid. That's why it hardens. When the strong acid muriatic acid is introduced to concrete, it attacks the calcium hydroxide which is a very strong base. This chemical reaction between the acid and the base causes bubbling as we observed on the concrete, uproots the grease and oil, lowers the pH of the concrete, and of course that corrosive reaction etches the surface of the concrete. It's just science. Hands for Hire is a mobile app connecting neighbors ready to lend a hand with neighbors who need a hand. Download now in the App Store or on Google Play. Visit us at handsforhire.com. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel.